Hello everyone, it's Robin the Delta Crafter and I want to thank you for joining me for this special video on my YouTube channel. Today's video is a part of the Three C's Collaborative that I put on each season on my YouTube channel along with a couple of my other crafty YouTubers. The participants in this collaboration have made videos all around the central theme of fresh beginnings. All of their videos are linked in the description box below, so be sure to check them out as a part of this collaboration. All right, let's go ahead and get into my video. I'm gonna be creating my card using a couple of die sets from Honey Bee Stamps. These dies are part of the Lovely Layers die set, and we're gonna start off with the roses. We're also gonna incorporate the peonies and the tulips. These are all die sets that have been out for a year or so now, and they're going to work greatly together. We're going to create a beautiful background using the Script Bold Print stamp from Hero Arts. Then we're going to dress up those die cuts using a couple of Pink Fresh Studio inks. Surprise, I'm not using uh, Distress inks this time. We're going to be using Sparkling Rose, Apricot, and Lemon Whip ink. I know you guys are just as shocked as I am that I didn't use the Distress inks. We're also going to be using some Hero Hues Unicorn White ink from Hero Arts. To cut out our dies, we're going to be using some solid color um, cardstock from Basil. We're going to be using Easter Grass, Peach Cream, Berry Blush, and Moody Blue. Let's get started making our card. So as with most of my cards, we're going to start by making the background first. It's especially important uh, for this card because we're going to be using the um, Hero Arts white Unicorn White ink, which is a pigment ink. And what that means is this ink is a little bit thicker, so it's going to need some extra time to dry. So I'm taking out that bold, uh, the script bold print uh, stamp and I'm placing it in my misty tool and then I'm going to place a piece of that navy blue cardstock that moody blue cardstock onto my stamp exactly where I want it to be I put a little bit of repositionable adhesive on the back of it so that it would adhere to my misty on the inside of the um, of the door of the misty now I'm going to ink up the stamp with that unicorn white getting some good coverage all over the stamp then we're going to press this um, the script image onto our background to create a little bit of interest on the background for our card. That card stock has already been cut down to four by five and a quarter because we're making an A2 card. And um, so it's the perfect size for what we're going to do. I did notice that the there was a little space that was a little bit light, so I closed the door again and just pressed a little bit harder in that area. And then I was able to get a good stamped image on the background cardstock. So I'm going to set that background aside, let it dry, and we're going to move on to our die cutting. Now if you took a look at the cover image for this video, you saw that there were quite a few um, florals that were included in this card. This card is pretty easy to put together. What it is not is short on time. There is quite a bit of die cutting that has to take place in order to get the fullness of the bouquet that we're creating. That die cutting becomes much easier to do when you use the guide that comes with these Honey Bee Lovely Layer stamps. So that's the image that you see up in the top right hand corner. And that comes um, with each and every uh, piece of the Lovely Layers collection. So I'm using that guide to tell me which of the dies that I need for the rows. Uh, for the rows, I am doing the large rows. So most of the um, Lovely Layers you get a full flower and then you also get uh, like a bud stage. So I'm using the full full size rows, fully open rows for, uh, for this particular flower. So I've placed all of those dies onto my um, peach uh, cardstock and I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine and get all of my pieces um, cut out and get those ready um, for the next step. So I'm just removing all of those pieces from the die and um, placing those to the side. It's, when you're making a card with this many die cuts, it's best to kind of go through all of your um, things in stages. So I'm going to do all my die cutting. Then I'm going to do move on to the next step and do all of that step all together and then go on from there. 
So now I've moved on to the tulip and you saw the, um, the guide that comes with the tulip. And so I'm placing those uh, pieces of the tulip, the smaller tulip or the tulip bud onto my, um, my cutting plate. I am using the Spellbinder Platinum 6 um, Universal Die Cutting um, Platform, which is making quick work of being able to put a, a cut out all of these dies all at once. Because these are the smaller buds, I'm going to go ahead and cut two of each of these um, these flowers because they don't take up as take up as much space as the larger flowers. I used yellow cardstock for the tulip for this third and final flower, which is a peony. I'm going to use some pink cardstock. And again, I'm going to cut two peonies as well. This peony is really a closed bud peony, so it's a lot smaller than the other two flowers that I've cut previously. And I've taped all of the dies together using some easy C tape, which is also um, making quick work for cutting out these dies. So it wouldn't be a flower if it didn't have greenery. So I've gone back through each of the flowers and I've cut out the coordinating greenery which includes some stems and leaves. I've cut that out from a couple of different shades of green cardstock. So whatever you may have in your stash, you can use that, those shades of green because there's so many different green colors that um, occur in nature. I'm sure any of those that you have on hand will work. So I've now cut out all the pieces that I need for each of the three different kinds of flowers that are going to be included in this card. And now I'm just getting myself ready for the next step in the next phase of this, this creation. To create um, a little bit of depth and dimension on these flowers, I'm going to be adding some shading. So I'm going to be using some coordinating colors with each color of cardstock, but the, the ink shade that I'm using is a little bit darker. I'm going to use my assortment of smaller ink blending brushes um, to add this, these colors to my cardstock. And um, that's what I was showing you there. So up first, I'm going to do the rose. The rose has the most um, die cuts because it is the largest flower. Um, and so it, there are like seven total pieces to this, um, this particular flower. So I'm coming in with the apricot and I'm using a uh, flat, um, flat head blending brush from Rabbit Hole Designs. And I'm just adding some color to the edges of the flowers. I, what, one of the ways that I like to do this is kind of do a dry fit of the different die cut layers so I can see exactly what parts of the flower will be, will be showing once I layer them all up and assemble the flower. That will help inform me of where I need to add the shading and the inking. Now that's the way I like to do it. If you have another method, please by all means, you know, use the method that you're used to using. So I'm just gonna come in um, and I'm gonna hold this up to you. Another way that you can tell where you need um, to ink up is you can see little indentions that are made by the die. So you can see little impressions that are made. That Those impressions are made on parts of the die that are going to be showing on each layer. So you can use that as a way to figure out where you wanna add your inking as well. I'm coming in with the apricot ink. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, the Pink Fresh Studio inks come in a quad or four of coordinating colors. So they go from, you know, a light color to a dark, a light shade to a dark shade of that same color. I'm coming in with apricot, which is kind of in the middle of this particular shade of colors. And if you wanted to, you could even come in with a darker shade and do a little bit more shading to add a little bit more depth and dimension if that's, if that's your jam. I'm choosing to go with just one color here um, and it really turns out really nicely as you'll see in the end. So I've inked up all of the pieces and now I'm gonna go in with my Barely Arts glue using the precision tip. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue all over the die cuts and layer them up to get these, uh, to start assembling this rose. 
After I've layered each row, uh, layer onto each other, I just pick up the dies really quickly and kind of squeeze some of the areas where there's overlap just to make sure that everything is lined up uh, as nicely and neatly as I can possibly get it. So I just keep going and adding on all of the layers um, and until I get to the very last layer. So one of the things about this particular die, and I don't know, you guys let me know in the comment if you see it below. But you can see that petal on the, um, on the right there, just above my tweezers. For some reason to me, that looks like a chicken drumstick. I don't know what it is, but immediately when I saw this rose, I'm like, that looks like a chicken drumstick. Let me know in the comments below if you see it too. So I've gotten that rose all completed and assembled, and I've got it sitting under an acrylic block. Just to put a little bit of weight on it while I work on this tulip. This, uh, this tulip has only four layers, so we're, we got the hard work done first with the die that has the most parts and pieces. And now I'm going to move on to this uh, to the tulip, and I'm adding some yellow highlights or yellow um, shading to, to the different parts and pieces of the tulip. And that's going to come together quickly with the layering and gluing um, because you just have fewer pieces to put together. I'm going to put those up under an acrylic block as well and let those um, have a lot of um, time to adhere together while I move on to working on our final flower, the peony. Now this peony is tiny, um, well small really, it's not really tiny. Um, and so those, this comes together a lot, even the quickest of all three. Now it does have a base that it needs to be attached to for its stem. And then um, you can has a little part that you can put, a green part that you put on top as well. So I've added, did a shade, done the shading on that and assembled that together. And those are resting on the acrylic block as I've moved on to our rose. Um, I think once you add the stem to the rose, it really starts to come to life. So as I was getting ready to move on to the next part of the assembly, I decided to add, uh, bring in a piece of vellum to be like the um, wrapper that you might wrap a bouquet in. So you could, you could use a piece of clear acetate if you wanted to mimic cellophane, or you could do like I'm doing and like create, use this um, vellum to create kind of a wax paper kind of look. I also like the vellum because it allows me to see the um, the background through the vellum, um, which is going to turn out in the end going to turn out to be a nice touch um, when we get finished assembling. So I haven't quite put all of the um, stems and leaves on all of the flowers because I just want to kind of see exactly what kind of layout I'm going to go with. So I did a little bit of a dry fit to figure out what layout or how I wanted to lay out each of the florals. I also didn't kind of uh, adhere the vellum together because I wasn't sure how wide I needed the opening of the vellum to be to accommodate all of the flowers that we were making. So I've kind of figured that out and now I'm going to go ahead and crease my vellum paper so that I can um, minimize the bulk as much as I can um, on this card. This card really does end up being um, not that bulky of a card considering all of the layers of uh, die cutting that we have uh, layered together here. So all things considered, it's a pretty, pretty flat card. So I've chosen my uh, size of my vellum uh, wrap that I want to have. Now I've figured out, that, okay, yeah, I do want to go ahead and add the stems to all of the, the tulips. Um, and add that in, add those flowers into our bouquet. I'm holding my uh, vellum closed with a paper clip um, just until I figure out where everything is going to go. Um, those of you that have used vellum before know that adhesive shows through the vellum. So I wasn't quite ready to tack the vellum down because I didn't want the adhesive to show. Um, so I had to that had to be end up being one of the last things that I did. To keep my arrangement together, I decided to bring in a piece of press and seal paper. Um, love this stuff. Thank you again, Jennifer McGuire, for the suggestion. 
to hold all of my flowers together while I pull them out of that vellum, uh, that vellum wrap. So I'm using that Barely Arts glue again to kind of adhere all of the uh, flowers and the stems to each other and then get them ready to be adhered into the, uh, the vellum wrap that I created. So I'm just sliding those stems back down into the wrap and once I've done that, then I'm able to press the flowers into place so that the um, they adhere to the, the vellum wrap. So I initially thought that I might want to have the bouquet coming like catty corner out of the, of the corner of the card base. But then I turned it and kept playing with it a little bit and just landed on just having the bouquet straight up and down on the card base. And I, I think this really, really did turn out quite nicely. Um, so now I'm just adding a little bit of adhesive making sure to the back of the vellum, making sure that I put it behind the flowers. Otherwise, again, the vellum, I'm sorry, the adhesive would show through and we don't want that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive all over and then secure that um, bouquet and the wrap to our card base. Now here's where I my extra side started to show. This is definitely something that came about um, after I was already uh, really close to finishing this card. Um, I decided to add a piece of ribbon to the a wrap to make it look like the, the bouquet of flowers was wrapped with a piece of ribbon. This is totally not necessary. Um, but again, it was something, a, a decision that I made in the end. So I just tied up a, a simple bow with this ribbon and it helps that this ribbon is um, double faced satin on both sides. Um, so the same thing is going to show um, no matter what side ends up showing at the top. And then I'm going to um, take this bow secure it down with a little bit of glue and then I'm going to wrap the ribbon behind the um, the vellum so that it, ad it adheres and secures in the back of the vellum so just watch what I do here I end up having to trim the ribbon a little bit because I cut it way too long um, but that I'd rather have it too long than too short um, and then I put a little bit of glue down and press that ribbon into the glue that I placed on the um, that that background that we created. I'm going to hold that down just a little while to make sure that everything secure secures and holds. And then I'm going to cut off the excess of the wrap and a little bit of that stem. And there we have our completed bouquet. So again, this card is not hard to make. It does take a little bit of time. In total, it probably um, took me about an hour and a half to do all the die cutting, the inking, and full assembly and everything. I'm gonna place this card on a A2 card, uh, card base, which is cut from some um, uh, accent opaque card stock, 120 pound weight. Um, all of the things that I use today will be linked and listed below in the description box for you so that it'll make it easy for you. And then I just popped it up on some foam tape and used that foam tape to secure the card panel to the card base. And with that, this card is complete. Take a look at all of those layers and take, take in all the depth that that shading creates. So while I had all my supplies out, I went ahead and created another card using those same dies and stamps. But this time I used a tone on tone ink for the background. So that's actually a navy blue ink that is stamped onto that moody blue card stock. So it's just the slightest impression that you can see there. Just enough interest to keep catch your eye. And this bouquet didn't have um, the wrap. So just showing you another version of the car using the same um, materials. I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. If you have enjoyed it, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and joining the Delta Crafter family by subscribing to the channel. Again, be sure to check out everyone who's participating in this collaboration by clicking on their videos which are linked in the description box. 
As always, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Delta Crafter, as well as on my blog and website, thedeltacrafter.com. Until next time, everyone, enjoy! Enjoy!